Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Major storm damage in downtown Pineville tonight. Most of it was caused by large trees that were knocked down. Thankfully, no injuries are reported. WYMT's Emily Bennett talked to officials about the damage. It was a quiet afternoon in Pineville until... We heard a large boom, as like a transformer or something blew, and we started getting calls of one of the area businesses had a roof blow off. They looked out the window at City Hall and saw everything blowing through the parking lot. I first thought that it uh, had to be a, a tornado coming through. I mean, uh, it was it was so fast. It was chaos. The storm damaged several vehicles, including city and personal trucks. A mobile home behind City Hall was destroyed. A local business also lost its roof. I really couldn't put a value on it. It's it's going to be very significant damage to personal property and city property. Pineville police officers responded immediately. And they all came in off duty and took care of um, all the residents in town, did wellness checks on everyone that could have been affected. City workers started clearing the downed trees after the storm blew through. They're going to be out working throughout the night. Periodically, they may take breaks to do other stuff due to damage in other parts of the city but I would say it's going to be a couple day event. But they will not let it put a damper on their 4th of July celebrations. In Bell County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now Pineville had to cancel its 4th of July festival they had planned for tonight, but they did have fireworks at 10 o'clock this evening. Now a pool party and cookout is still planned for tomorrow. Really, all of us got in on a few of those pop-up showers and storms throughout the day. They were, of course, strong at times. We even got reports of some damage over into parts of Morgan County. But as you look at satellite and radar, they don't look that scary on satellite and radar. There are just a few pop-ups here and there. Like I said, they were just strong at times, but then they would die down actually pretty quickly. So as we look at radar now, we're kind of seeing those starting to die down. You'll notice heavier rain as you're looking just north of Breathitt County, even into parts of Morgan County, a little bit into Rowan County, Wolf County as well, looking a little bit over into parts of Lee County. As we look at those temperatures, upper 60s to lower 70s, really where we're going to stay as we head into the rest of those overnight hours. Those dew points not making it feel too good out there. Those also in the upper 60s to lower 70s. That's that oppressive category. It's definitely feeling pretty muggy out there. That trend ha will just really continue as we head into the next few days. So that 4th of July forecast is looking like we're going to see some more scattered storms continue. We're also going to look at that weekend forecast where once again, scattered storms are going to continue. Not a total wash out though we'll take a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short, few short minutes Steve. all right Paige thank you a federal judge approves a five million dollar lifeline to help one of the country's largest coal producers navigate bankruptcy on the condition that its CEO step down court documents say the financing will go toward providing security and personnel to extinguish fires at Black Jewel LLC's mines as it determines its next steps the agreement requires CEO Jeff Hoops to resign. Meanwhile, those working in the Harlan County mines owned by Black Jewel have had all the money from their last check disappear. One woman we talked to said $3,000 vanished from her account this afternoon. Oh yeah, everyone that works, I guess, in all of the Harlan Black Jewel Revelation mines, it's happened. Um, because there's a, a mine up in Cumberland, and those guys are complaining. And then one of the other mines that's next door to them, up above Everts, um, they're complaining too. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley called the situation reprehensible and says these miners deserve an explanation and deserve to be paid for the work they performed. Former University of Kentucky quarterback Jared Lorenzen has died at only 38 years old. Lorenzen played for the Cats from 2000 to 2003, setting several UK passing records. Lorenzen had been in a Northern Kentucky hospital since last week with an infection and other health issues. In recent years, he's documented his struggle with his weight. Matthew Rand looks at how people are remembering Jared Lorenzen. 
season and the Big Blue Nation in mourning as big number 22 has gone way, way too soon. Big Blue Insider host Dick Gabriel sharing the studio with former Wildcat Cameron Mills, sharing memories of Jared Lorenzen. He was gregarious. He, uh, he went out and sought the fans and sought the people and not in a I need to be the center of the limelight kind of way, but in a I want to go make somebody's day. The hefty lefty to Pillsbury throw boy. All the titles that were put on him with love by Kentucky fans and adopted by people across the country, really. The two took calls from the likes of Tom Leach, the voice of the Wildcats, who said there were people early on who questioned whether Lorenzen should even be UK's quarterback. And Coach Brooks came in, I think it took about one, one play in that <laughs> first game in 2003 for him to realize Okay, I don't care what kind of shape he's in. This guy <laughs> makes plays. Plays that former Kent Derek Abney was often on the receiving end of. But Jared had a unique arm. Um, there wasn't a lot of people that could throw as hard as Jared could and, and find those little, like you said, slivers, Dick, and, and he made it happen. And, and he could float some deep ones, yep. too. Famous for his weight, Lorenzen had been making strides to shed pounds, which Mills believes he had decided to do for his family. I, I remember running into him at a, one of his kids' basketball games and watching him. He wasn't the coach, but of course he coached from the sidelines, watching him coach his son. And that, more than anything, I think, is what eventually got him to the point where I want to be around for my kids. I think what hurts today is that he was fighting this, and to my knowledge, a fight that he was slowly winning and just ran out of time. He had and lost think, 100 pounds. And that's what yeah. sucks. Yeah. And that was Matthew Rand reporting. Now, Marcus Browning will have more on the life and legacy of Jared Lorenzen later in sports. New at 11, state troopers say they found a missing man's truck not far from an unidentified body. Officials say the truck belongs to this man, Adam McCoy. He has ties to Floyd County. Less than one mile away, troopers say they found a body. Now, troopers are not yet ready to say if the body is McCoy. They are waiting for dental records from the medical examiner's office. No foul play is suspected at this time, but it has not been ruled out. A Somerset man is behind bars on a charge of murder. Police say this man, 63-year-old Thomas Burton, killed 73-year-old Irvin Phillips in a road rage incident back in June. Burton claims he was protecting himself after Phillips poked Burton with his cane. Burton was taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. A bourbon warehouse in central Kentucky is destroyed. It caught fire last night. Take a look at this video. These are ground shots from Woodford County. Fire officials think a lightning strike sparked the fire. They say it was so large it took them hours to contain the flames. Runoff from crews spraying water onto the fire got into a nearby creek and into the river. People might see some discoloration in the water. Um, but Division of Water tells me that most of that is uh, ash from the fire okay. as opposed to straight bourbon on the water. The Kentucky Energy and Environmental Cabinet anticipates a substantial amount of fish will die. A spokesperson for Jim Beam's parent company says the warehouse held pretty young whiskey and it will not hurt their supplies in stores. Tomorrow will mark six months since a Madison County mother went missing. Servanna Spurlock was last seen leaving a bar with three men in January. The family is still searching for answers and they brought in a private investigator to help. That investigator told us earlier this week he plans to knock on doors and comb social media looking for clues. There is a reward for information in the case. It's been almost one week since a former Leslie County teacher's home burned to the ground. June Begley's home caught fire early in the morning on June 27th. She lost everything. Now the church that she is part of and the community she served as a school teacher for years are stepping up to help replace what was lost. A time like this, you can tell who your real friends and who really loved you. And she, she told me they were some people that she was never expecting to just step up and you know just show the love to her. We have ways you can donate on our website at WYMT.com. The Bloodmobile made a stop at WYMT today for our annual summer blood drive. Several Eastern Kentuckians came by the station to give the gift of life. Every donor left with a Born to Give shirt as a thank you gift, and Rebecca Cottle was one of those donors. It's just really fulfilling to think that I'm able to help somebody, and it's no cost to me, and it's not hurting me, and it's just something I'm able to do for someone who might really need it. 
Every donor above the age of 18 who gives blood with the Kentucky Blood Center by September 6th will be entered to win a Toyota Tacoma. Nearly 20 people gave blood today in just three hours. Well, many people hit the roads today to get a head start on the long holiday weekend. People passing through London this afternoon on Interstate 75 said they could tell a significant difference in traffic from yesterday to this morning. Gas station employees say they expected heavy traffic, especially with ongoing construction. Employees say the traffic is good for them. It's good for the restaurants, it's good for the hotels, and I mean, even these mom and pop shops that we have over here, it's good for everyone when it keeps getting busier and busier. Gas station employees say they expect the traffic is only going to get worse. Mine Made Adventure Park and Campground in Knott County has a new addition this summer. You can now explore more than 150 miles of ATV trails. The judge executive wanted to add more to the park this summer, and now the first Thunder Through the Mountain ATV ride will run through Sunday. Events include guided rides, mud, dirt, and water events, and a poker run. There's a, uh, there are a lot of ATV riders in this area. A lot of people actually come in from Ohio, Indiana, out of the state. Uh, we have the biggest trail system in the state, 150 miles, 43,000 acres, so a lot of riding to be done here. The trails reach from Virginia to Tennessee. They will have a 4th of July celebration with local music and fireworks. They hope, they hope to build a campground to accommodate those who travel out of state. Coming up at 11, the Navy SEAL found not guilty for the murder of a POW learns his sentence for lesser charges. But first, could you only eat raw meat? A Kentucky man is making international headlines because of his unusual diet. And scattered showers and storms continue for the 4th of July. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up.